Auditions. The common struggle of the actor. What even is an audition? Well, put simply, an audition is a combination job interview slash skill demonstration of your abilities as an actor. It's what you want to show them what you can do. What kinds of auditions are there? The short answer is several. Auditions can come in a variety of forms, but these are the most common. The three-minute, two-monologue audition. Readings, whether they're cold or warm. The 90-second, one-song, one-monologue. The dance call and the screen test. Now, let's break those down and understand what they are and when you might encounter them. There's a, one important thing that all auditions have in common. They, meaning the director, the casting director, whoever, want you to be good. They want to hire you. So your job is to be as excellent as you can possibly be. First, the three minutes to monologue audition. It's contrasting, meaning they vary in emotional tone. Classical, written before the year 1910, and contemporary, written after the year 1910. So, if I put all that together, three minutes contrasting contemporary classical monologues, that's this audition. It's the most common kind of audition, especially for the theater. Classical monologues can, and most frequently are, by Shakespeare, but also playwrights like Chekhov, the ancient Greek writers, contemporaries of Shakespeare, etc., the monologue should be no longer than 90 seconds. Ideally, it's a little bit less because you want to leave them wanting more. You don't want to be right at the edge of your time. Contemporary monologues can be from almost anything. Different casting directors have different preferences, but you're best off, especially as a young actor, doing monologues from published plays, not from TV or film. Although, for every one casting director who will say, don't do something from TV or film, you'll find another casting director who says, do it. So the, the jury's still out. These pieces should also be no longer than 90 seconds, ideally shorter. In my personal opinion, the three minute audition shouldn't be three minutes. It should be about two minutes and 45 seconds, just because it gives you a little bit of cushion. What is this type of audition for? It's the most standard form of audition for college programs, educational or community theater shows, and professional theater seasons like summer Shakespeare festivals. It's common because it's supposed to show off how versatile you are. The reason why we call it contrasting is because it's supposed to allow you to demonstrate your emotional sensitivity, dexterity with language, and ability to physically transform between two characters in a matter of moments. However, that still requires a significant amount of skill and practice, which is why college theater programs spend a significant amount of time training their students to be able to master these skills in classes and in audition prep workshops so that students can execute them under the pressure of an audition room setting. A professional actor should have a book of audition monologues that they keep prepared at all times so that depending on what season of plays they're auditioning for, they can pick monologues that are stylistically appropriate but not exactly from the plays that they want to be considered for. Type number two, readings, whether cold or warm. This is the most common form of callback, especially in theater. In a warm reading, you are given the script and a day or possibly more to prepare your performance on the character that you are asked to read for. In a cold reading, you are given the script right there in the audition room and you have maybe five minutes to read over it and familiarize yourself before you have to deliver a performance. What are they looking for in a reading audition? Simply put, they're looking for your opening night performance of whatever role they have you reading for. What do I mean by that? They want to see the way you would perform that role without any direction. Because the director or the casting director wants to see if your instincts match their vision for how they believe the character should be played. This means you cannot just wait around to be told what to do. If you don't make acting choices, they're going to assume you can't act. It also means you need to be really good at analyzing text fast and getting a sense of who the character is. Be prepared to be asked to do something different in your performance. This isn't a bad thing. If they ask you to adjust, they're usually looking at two things at once. Number one, how well you can quickly take direction, if you can at all. And two, they might just be so excited by how well you're doing, they want to see if you can be even closer to what they envision for the character. Additional tips for reading auditions. If they hand you the script on the spot, which is a cold read, and ask you to do it, you can always ask for a little bit of time. 
They won't be offended. If they don't have time to wait, then they'll just say that, and you nod politely and give it your best shot. But if they have five minutes to spare for you to read over it and get some ideas, asking costs you nothing, but not asking could cost you the job. For a warm reading, my personally, my personal, av blah, 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 my personal advice, and you'll find plenty of people who disagree with me, for coming into the reading memorized or nearly memorized. You can't give an opening night performance, which is what they want, if your eyes are glued to a page. Whenever you're auditioning for a well-known or published play that you can read in advance, read it in advance! The number of lazy or unread actors who wander their way into auditions, completely oblivious to what the heck they're auditioning for, makes directors and casting directors furious. Alright, musical theater auditions. The 90 second one song, one monologue. Just like the traditional monologue audition, these two pieces that you select should be contrasting in mood and style. In other words, a dramatic song, like a ballad, and a comedic monologue, or a comedic song, and a more serious or romantic monologue. The singing will usually be between 16 and 32 bars of music, which you need to select in advance and communicate with the accompanist at the piano, if there is one, in the room when you walk in. Professional auditions will tell you if you need to bring sheet music for the accompanist or your own pre-recorded track. Additional info on the 90 second audition. The 16 to 32 bars of music should show you off. Pick a part of the song with your high note, your power belt note, your ability to riff if you can and do it really, really well, whatever. The amount of music, once you sing it, should be no more than 45 seconds of time. You still need to allocate the time in the audition for the monologue. Depending on the musical, or perhaps musicals, plural, if you're auditioning for a summer stock musical theater season, the monologue you pick will most likely be best as a contemporary monologue unless they specifically ask for classical. Do not use music written by the following composers at these auditions. The accompanist will hate you and want you to die, and they probably won't play it well, which might mess you up. Do not use anything by Sondheim, Jason Robert Brown, or Adam Gettle. The reason being, all three of those composers are wonderful, brilliant, outstanding. Their accompaniment is so freaking hard. And the accompanist has been sitting at that piano playing all day. Their hands are tired. Their brains are tired from trying to sight read a thousand different pieces of music. If you give them something crazy complicated, there's no guarantee that they're going to be able to pull it off. It's just not worth it. Finally, do not ask to start over. Power through. Ain't nobody got time to go back, and if they want you to go back, they'll tell you. Otherwise, whether it's good, bad, or ugly, you're gonna have to live with it. Now, the dance call. Usually for musicals, but not always. Most musicals, but not all, have dance call auditions. Depending on the show, these might be extremely challenging choreography. A chorus line, anything goes, Chicago. Or it might be simpler, just so the director and the production team can find out if the actors can act, move together to rhythm, and count music all at the same time. Something like Sweeney Todd, 1776, Assassins. Many period plays, meaning plays that are set in a particular period of history, also have dancing in them, so, like waltzing, folk dance, etc., it behooves actors to know how to move. Any good acting program requires its students to take dance classes, even if those students don't want to be musical theater actors, because physical control of the body and a basic understanding of the fundamentals of dance and movement is necessary to a well-rounded artist. Can you imagine losing out on winning a leading role for a period play like Sense and Sensibility because your two left feet meant you couldn't look realistic in the famous ballroom scenes? What a crazy way to lose a job. Rules for the dance call audition. Dress to move. Athletic wear is good, but please don't look like you're going to the gym in baggy basketball shorts and raggedy cut-up shirts. Sweats are usually advised against. What's preferred is leggings, t-shirts, jazz pants, etc. These are all acceptable. Dance shoes if you've got them, and get them if you don't. Depending on the dance call in question, they'll tell you what to bring. Ballet slippers, point shoes, jazz shoes, tap shoes, but the honest truth? You'll have a bag with all of those things in them anyway. Bring them all, it can't hurt to be prepared. Keep talking in the room to a minimum. Watch the choreographer or dance captain who will be teaching the choreography very carefully. Make sure your professionalism is always evident, even if you are not the best dancer in the room. 
Do not mock yourself when you're in the room. No one cares or has time to listen to you try and compensate for your feelings of self-consciousness by putting yourself down. It's the mark of an amateur, so don't do it. Always be polite. Those things are crazy crowded, and a reputation for rudeness is a great way to make sure that no one helps you if you need it. Finally, the screen test, which is exclusively for film and TV. This is part of the callback process for film and TV projects. Frequently, the screen test is a paired audition with readings from the script, cold or warm, but usually warm. Sometimes the screen test is with a scene partner, but not always. The goal is also to see how well the actor is aware of where the camera is and can quote-unquote use the camera to help shape their performances. Camera acting is a slightly different skill set from stage acting, and often actor training programs will offer whole courses in screen acting so that actors can learn the skills of working with the camera. Tips for a screen test audition. Try not to let the nerves overwhelm you. If you've made it that far, it's a really good sign that they're considering you. Same as warm readings for theater, be memorized or almost memorized. They want to see your face and eyes on the camera, not buried behind paper. Find ways to be spontaneous, authentic, and fresh. Don't do the same thing take after take after take. Connect with your scene partner. More on that in a minute if you have one. Especially in a romantic scene if that's what you've got. They want to see if you have chemistry with the other actors. And if you don't connect, they'll assume you are an emotionless, unromantic block of wood and you'll probably lose the gig. Final super important rules for auditions. Always be polite. Say please and thank you to everyone you meet, from the receptionist to your scene partners to someone who holds the door open to the director. Manners maketh the person and you don't know who is who. Do not apologize if you screw up. Whether it was an accidental slip of the tongue or you're screwing up because you didn't prepare enough, do not say I'm sorry. They assume you're sorry because they assume you didn't want to make a mistake. Fix it and keep going. Don't ever ask for feedback in the room. Just do not do it. They do not have time and it makes you seem like a compliment hog. Next, you will be nervous. The only way to beat nerves is to be so prepared that you know you can execute at your highest level no matter how nervous you are. This is why I preach about perfect practice and muscle memory. Finally, think about auditions this way. This is the only way I ever started to get good at them. Think of them as getting to act. Acting and performing is fun, or at least it should be fun to you, because otherwise why are you there? If you walk into the room thinking, today I get to play Lady Macbeth and Maggie from Cat on a Hot Tin Roof, that changes your mindset into thinking more about how much fun you'll have acting, rather than worrying the whole time about what other people think of you. Last and most important thing, Rejection does not mean that you are worthless or talentless or incapable. Art is subjective. You may go into an audition to absolutely wonderful work, and they might not call you back because you don't look like what the director had pictured in their head for the character. Art is subjective. You may go into an audition and do absolutely wonderful work, but they already saw someone that they think is just a little bit better for the part than you, and so they aren't going to give you the gig. They still loved you and your work, but sometimes someone else just plain beats you, and there's nothing you can do about that. Art is subjective. You might give a wonderful performance, but the people on the other side of the table don't think it's wonderful. They might think your interpretation is wrong. They might not have time to ask you to change something to see if you can match what they envision. There's nothing you can do about that, so don't take it personally. Art is subjective. You can't take it personally. If you live and die by other people's opinions of your abilities, you will never be able to live the life of an artist. You have to have faith in yourself and recognize that you will win some and lose some, and both of those things are just part of the deal. Remember these lessons well, my friends. You will need them. <laughs>